Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a race style switch panel for your car. So I'm going to be doing this in my current project which is my Nissan Pulsar GTIR but I've done a switch panel video as well uh, in my Evo and I've made switch panels for countless cars over the years and it's always the same kind of uh, principle with what you do. It just depends how you need to fit it, as in how it will actually physically fit into the car. It differs obviously between cars and what you want your switch panel to do. Do you want it just to be a starter button and a kill switch? Do you want it to just be two flick switches? Do you want it to have fan controls and so on and so forth? I've always, as I did with my Evo, I've always done a kill switch so I've got added security on all the Japanese cars aren't always that secure I've always done a starter button because I think it's very cool to have a starter button because I'm a big kid and most recently with the Evo I have done the stage one and stage two ignition so you don't need the key apart from the steering lock and that is what I'm going to do on the Pulsar and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video so we have lots of stuff here but it looks a bit scary, but it's not. You just need lots of different wires, depending on how many switches you want to run. You need some of these kind of ring style um, cable crimping things, whatever you want to call them. They're M3 ones. You need cardboard to make your templates for your car, depending on how you want your layout to be. As you can see, I made four here, well, three really. Then you need your switches, and you need your starter button, and you need your kill switch, if you're gonna do what I'm doing, and you need your LEDs. So I'll put up in this video what switches I bought, what LEDs I bought, what starter button I bought, what kill switch I bought, so you can get the same stuff if you want to. Um, the only other thing you then need, depending on what finish you want, is a piece of carbon. You can see here that I've already made my kind of final layout because I'd already done this before the video just to make sure that I knew what I was doing. So I'll just show you on the Pulsar how I came up with a solution. Obviously your car will be different, but again, this is probably the most time consuming part of the job is working out the layout and working out what room you've got to play with. So let's take a look at the car and I'll show you with my final template that seems to be the one that fit best. Okay, so. I've already been doing other things on the Pulsar with the clutch pedal in my last video. So all the trim is removed and the seats are removed because I'm doing other things. But basically you just need to take off the center console here, which is only held in place with a few screws and then it just clips out the way and you just need to undo the um, switches for hazard light and uh, rear window demister or you might have other switches there but it's very simple to do that and you need to pull out your ashtray too but all that has been done and i've removed the steering column underneath and in a video i did recently i was fitting a turbo timer in the pulsar so my car already has the um, hks adapter kit for the sr20 det so i would suggest you have one of those if you have a turbo timer it makes this a lot easier but it's the same kind of principle again you just need to find which wires do what and then you just need to either tap into those wires if you want the key to still work or you need to pull those wires if you don't want the key to work and then just run those wires to your switches and that's it so the only thing i had to do really was make these two brackets here so these are three mil aluminium and one each side and they're basically bolted screwed i should say into the existing holes here that holds this plastic panel in and then i've just put some screw holes in here so this goes on there like that and sits there kind of pretty perfectly and um, give me a shout if you want the dimensions and stuff for this switch panel but it's fairly straightforward to kind of figure it out yourself on your car and you may want to do something different than i've done um so that's why i'm kind of not dwelling too much on this part of it so now i've kind of shown you how i've made my cardboard template which you know is how i start most jobs these days on this car in particular um let's have a look at 
getting the switch panel kind of built up and then we can get on with the wiring. Okay, so this here, I've even written some measurements on it, what I've done, like 18 mil from the side, uh, 22 mil circles, etc. that you need to do. Um, and to get this shape, of course, I'll just mention this, just fit the cardboard up to the car, put the center console back in and then just draw around with a pen so you know what space you've got to play with. So that basically became this and now we can just add in the various bits. I'm not going to wire this in on this video because I'm going to do a deadweight Tog 500 battery install in the boot um, and I need to do all the wiring for that so I'm not going to wire this in for this video. I will just wire in the starter button and the two switches uh, for this video. Um, so yeah, that'll come in a different video but I mean it's two wires, it's not exactly rocket science. So that will go in there like so and then our starter button goes in there like that and then we need to put this on the back need to mount these up so i'll just do that quickly and then we can start looking at the wiring Okay, so that's our first two little wires done. So that's all good. What I'm gonna do, what you should do if you want the security is take a live feed here to the battery terminal, to the um, kill switch, sorry. Live feed to the kill switch and then put your starter button from here to here. So it's only getting power when the secondary stage is on. So you can't um, hit the start button basically without this being on um, and this obviously won't work if the kill switch is gone so let's make our wires up for here and for here and then we can get onto the car Okay, so apologies there, the battery on my NoPro died, so I had to recharge it. Um, but we are done with the kind of off-car wiring anyway. So we've basically got accessory one getting its power from the on state of the kill switch. Accessory two, same thing. We've got our LEDs that are going in when they get power to light up there. And we've got our starter button taking power here from the second one when this is on so that is that bit done so now we can get on with looking at the wiring on the car and sort of get things snipped and cut and wires run and stuff to the center console okay so now we're on the car this is our ignition barrel here and i've already used my voltmeter turning the key and testing each of these wires here to see what is what and the yellow wire is ignition one green wire is ignition two and the white wire is the starter so that's yellow green and white there so all we need to do is we just need to take these pins out of this plug here from the hks harness and then we're going to run these wires through to our buttons OK, 
okay so there you go dead easy job we've pulled our pins from here so all i need to do now is just extend these that way with some wire into the center console to the switch panel and then wire them up to the switch panel and that is basically your job done anyone who cares this is the hks turbo timer harness that works with every japanese aftermarket turbo timer and if you're interested this is the power lead here which is still connected so that's going to keep giving power to the turbo timer control box which it needs because it uses this power here to detect when the key has been turned to keep the turbo timer on and get the turbo timer to kick in and this is accessory one accessory two or whichever way around it is and it keeps power to those when the switches or the ignition key has been turned off so that's essentially how your turbo timer works just bypasses the ignition barrel so there we go let us get these wires extended first thing i'm going to do though is i'm going to just fit my switch panel into place and get the earth done for the leds and then we can yeah get on with this wiring Okay, so we've finished doing the earths now for the um, LEDs on the center panel. Sorry about my voice, I've got a frog in my throat today and I can't seem to clear it, it's really annoying. Um, but the next job is gonna be to wire in the three wires that are gonna go from the ignition barrel to the switch panel for the accessory one, accessory two, and the starter button. So this is our turbo timer harness and this is why I'm saying it's good to get one um, because it means you don't have to modify your car's harness you can just modify this one so I'm just going to snip these off and I'm just going to attach the wires that I've been and bought uh, onto these and then we can then just run these nice and neatly inside the car and get them to the switch panel and then that is the switch panel done essentially so let's crack on with that Okay, I went and did the last wire without videoing it because you've seen me do two, you don't need to see me do three. Um, but there we go, that's all done, now ready. So I'm just gonna trunk this up when we get it on the car once we work out the length. Um, and then we can just add the little connectors up for the switch side and the start button side. And then that is the install done. Okay, so I've tidied the wiring up a little bit and we are now on the final stretch for the switches and the starter button. So now I just need to snip these off and attach them up like this. And then that's this bit done. Obviously still this bit to do, but this bit will be done. That's our switch panel wired minus the kill switch. Hopefully you can see how I've done everything there and kind of tidied it all up. Need to tidy that up a bit more, but kind of semi-tidied. So next thing I need to do is I need to fit the new battery in the boot and I need to run all the wires for the battery um, so we can get the kill switch wired up. So I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm gonna do that in a separate video that I've already started 
So we'll come back in a few seconds after a sponge bob and all the wiring should be ready for us to then just get the nuts in place and get it all screwed up, give it a test and then put everything back together. Several bad puns later. Okay, so it has been over two months since I shot the last clip in this video for you. It's seconds, for me it's several months. The reason for that is because I've been doing the battery relocation in the boot video because the two go hand in hand. Uh, and I've also been mucking around in the engine bay with the wiring, which is a real mess, which I kind of covered in the battery relocation video, if you want to look at that. But we are done now. So here is where we've ended up. So we've got our switch panel all wired up, everything tightened. We've got our battery connections all done there. And we've got our battery in the boot there, our deadweight battery. So that's all looking good. So the last thing to do now is going to be to just put the switch panel into place give it a test and then I'm just going to bugger off and put all the interior back together and stuff. I'm not going to video that. I will put probably the center console back in just so you can see like the finished result. But uh, that will be it for this video. So let's get it screwed back in and then let's give it a go. Okay, so the moment of truth, is it going to work is the question. Right, so kill switch, in, stage one ignition, we don't need the key of course, stage two, okay that's good, everything's lit up on the dash, and we've got our turbo timer set for 10 seconds, hit the start button, there you go, not going to start it obviously, but when we now kill this, it stays lit up because the turbo timer is doing its thing, Kill the turbo timer. There we go. 12 seconds later. Okay, that is it. We are done. All the trim back in. Hopefully you can see kind of how we're looking there now in the Japanese cave. But that is it. I'm only putting one seat in because I'm swapping the seats soon, I hope. So I didn't think there's any point putting two seats in and, you know, solo lap, one seat. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, any questions as always give me a shout either here or on Instagram and yeah on to the next video which I think is going to be the vented headlight so thank you for watching